So if we take a step to uh, our previous discussion of going from zero to hero, so going from the, the early days through the, the teenage years to winning an Olympic medal. So we mentioned a lot of training, the dedication of the training, the competing, what other elements are there? The mental side is uh, visualization, believing that you could perform at that level. Uh, so what else can you say about I that? I think process? that comes at the highest level, the, the visualization, the success, that comes at the highest level. I think in the teen years, um, there's the experience, Just experience plays a huge role yeah. in getting to train with other people. Like as Americans, we have to go train in Europe. We have to feel the European style of judo. We have to understand that physicality. They they grip very differently. They they put you in very unorthodox positions. And if you when if you don't know how to deal with that, you get thrown before you even have a chance to try your own throws. Yeah. You know, so it takes a lot of it takes a lot of that experience and understanding what's going on. Um, and then you also need to get that physicality. You need to be physic, you know, strong and, and hard, I would say, by doing all those rounds with the Europeans. And at the same time, you need to go to Asia and you need to train in, in, in Japan because you need to feel that free flowing judo for your technical, the technical side. And I think that's one of the things that I was able to benefit from. My dad was a coach who said, listen, I've taken you as far as I can take you. I want you to go to the next level. I want, you know, he sent me to, to England with Neil Adams, who was an Olympic silver medalist and was a world champion, had a great ground game and was good at gripping and actually did Tai Otoshi, which is the throw I did. So my dad said, I want you to go learn from Neil. And I ended up going to, to England probably eight to 10 times in my career and spending a good amount of time there training at the Neil Adams Academy. Um, he's now the voice of judo, Neil Adams. Um, what do you so, make of that guy? Just a brief pause. He's like the... Like uh, Morgan Freeman is the voice of like <laughs> March of the Penguins and any other nature documentary. Right. And Neil Adams is, uh, there's very few sports that have a Neil Adams, I would say, because he's legitimately, maybe like Joe Rogan yeah. is that for mixed martial arts. It's just like an exceptionally recognizable voice. He's really knowledgeable. Also the passion is conveyed so well. Like many times I'll watch just because he's talking. Right. So who, who is he since he got the chance to to train with him, to learn from him. Who's Neil Adams? He's a great friend of mine. He is. Um, he's a okay. mentor. Um, I, like I said, I lived and trained at the Neil Adams Club in Coventry, England, mm -hmm. since I was like 16 years old. I went and visited him for the first time. He's the one who originally taught me how to do Jujigatami and the way that I do Jujigatami. Mm -hmm. um, I trained with him. He was just retired. He was in his early 30s when I first went out there. And, you know, so I, I trained with him many times. And, uh, over the years, he's he was a mentor, um, great person. You know, cares cares about people, cares about you know the sport of judo. Um, had a good little club that was a fitness club, and uh, you know had a, it was it was judo, it was fitness. It, it you know used to go there. I'd show up at that place at like seven in the morning, and the first thing we would do is we'd go for a run, and we'd either be running mountains, or we'd be doing a five mile run, or we'd be doing something at the park. We were doing sprints and buddy carries and all this stuff, and then at nine a.m. we'd have a technical session with Neil Adams, where he would, you know, for an hour and a half, we would drill techniques and learn positions, and it was no randori. It was that sequential drilling that we talked about before, mm -hmm. right? Where you're reinforcing your your two or three t attacks to set up your main attack, or if you're on the ground, you're going through repetitions of certain movements. Um, and then I'd spend all afternoon at the club, have lunch. I'd go do my weight training in the afternoon at that, at that place. And then in the evening, we would either do randori training at the Neil Adams Club, or we would all get in a car and we'd drive to another, another location mm -hmm. You know, and we'd go train in another club that might be an hour away, and there'd be you know fifty bodies there to train with, and each night we'd go to a different dojo, and so it would be all day at the club, and I'd do that for like three weeks straight. That's you know, awesome. all we do was train. Do you know how he became the voice of judo? Do you have an understanding of uh, what he's thinking is around like how much he dedicates himself to just uh, commentating on judo? I imagine the amount of research required. But also just like psychologically, just the excitement he has in his voice, it, it, just, it takes work to do that. Do you have an understanding of like what his vision is with that? He's always been a very charismatic, uh, animated person, Neil. Okay, you know, so. very passionate and loud and, and yeah. you know, funny. Yeah. And the Brits are very funny to begin with. So he's, he's you know, very charismatic. But um, 
I think after coaching, he tried coaching. He coached the country of Wales for a while. He tried coaching stints in other countries. He didn't. He didn't have a lot of success on the coaching side, um, developing an Olympic champion. I know that some that was a goal of his that he he was a world champion. I think it was 1981. He won two silver medals in the Olympic Games um, himself. He went on to coach for a while and had some pol political issues with the the country of, of England for a while mm -hmm. and then left England and went to Wales. And I think he had a coaching stint somewhere else as well. Didn't have a lot of success coaching in the sport um, with athletes, not at the highest level, had a great national team and things like that. And he was really good at at teaching his technique to others because he, he helped me a lot. Um, but running a program, I think, was difficult for him. You know, the boys not listening and not having that same kind of passion and intensity that he, and that's why I bonded well with him because I was all in, right? I went there and whatever he said, I did. I didn't care how hard, I didn't care how long. I just wanted to get as good as I could. And so that's why he was a good mentor for me. Uh, but now in terms of a, um, a commentator, I mean, he, he's very cerebral. He just, he, he loves judo. He, he look, researches it nonstop. Um, he's got that great voice. And he knows how to bring bring life to the, you know, to the game, and that's what he's done. And now this is who he is, right? He he does judo full time. This is his job. 